Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Thursday, February 11th, 2021, and today we're going to be talking about where Joe Biden outperformed Barack Obama when looking at his 2012 election victory over Mitt Romney. So we know in 2012 that Barack Obama won uh, the election against Mitt Romney. He won the popular vote by roughly four points. He was able to win 332 electoral votes to Mitt Romney's 206. Uh, looking at the electoral map back in 2012, what we see is a very similar map to, to, to the, uh, compared to 2020, the only difference being Arizona and Georgia, which went to the Democrats in 2020, uh, and then Florida, which went to the Democrats in 2012. But besides those three states, we pretty much saw everything else remain the same besides Nebraska's second congressional district and Maine's second congressional district. There weren't really uh, too many other surprises. Actually, I'm forgetting two big states, Iowa and Ohio, which all the way uh, you know went to uh, Barack Obama by a very large amount. But outside of those states, uh, outside of those five states, we didn't really see a drastically different electoral map, but the margins certainly were different. And that's what we're going to be identifying today, where Joe Biden did better than Barack Obama when it comes down to states that went to Trump and states that went to Romney, states that went to Obama, states that went to uh, Biden. So you're going to see a number of states where Biden may have lost, but he still did better than Barack Obama in 2012. And if you're wondering why I'm choosing 2012, uh, just because it reminds me a lot of the 2020 election and it was an election that uh, was surprisingly close, not so surprising in 2012. It was definitely expected to be. But at the end of the day, what we saw in 2012 was a relatively close election, even though it seemed like Obama won by a very large amount on the popular uh, on the electoral college vote. The popular vote was closer than 2020. And of course, the electoral map was closer this time around. So ultimately, uh, this was the closest one uh, out of a, in a while. But looking at the. Uh, 306 electoral vote victory for uh, President Biden. Uh, it also is something that needs to be identified that, you know, Biden, while he may have had his faults, did better than Obama in certain areas. And Obama definitely did much better. You can assume every one of the states that I don't characterize as a Biden outperformance state. Well, essentially just uh, is a, an Obama outperformance. So just assume that if you don't see a state characterized that it would be uh, more in favor of Trump than it was for Romney or uh, Biden did worse than Barack Obama. That's just how it's going to work. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and start with the states uh, on the West Coast and move over to the East Coast because that's how I'm going to do things in today's video. Uh, and there will be some surprising areas. You know, the entire West Coast, besides, uh, actually, not even besides California, Joe Biden did better than Barack Obama. And I find this strangely surprising. Uh, you know, when you're looking at the results in 2012, what you expected was an Obama uh, very large victory considering his electoral college victory was larger than Biden's. Uh, but the reason why Biden had a better popular vote victory despite a lower electoral college victory is because of states on the West Coast. Population centers where Biden was able to win more of the vote shift the state fundamentally to the left. Um, you know, Kerry won California by 9.9%. Biden won it in this election by 30 points. So there's a very big difference, you know, over the past two decades in California specifically, which used to be a moderately competitive state, the likes of, you know, comparing it to South Carolina or Alaska, uh, you know, just two points off what Minnesota was in this election now is a safe state for the Democrats. So there was a significant improvement from eight years ago, nine years ago now, uh, really eight years ago, actually, considering it's November 2012. Uh, but eight years ago, Obama had won the state by six points less than Joe Biden. And also neighboring Idaho, surprisingly, went to uh, Biden 1.1% more than it went to Donald Trump. But compared to 2008, you'll find a different story. Uh, over in Hawaii, nothing changed. But Alaska, Alaska is pretty interesting. Uh, Joe Biden does better in Alaska. And honestly, I expect that. Alaska might end up being one of the future swing states, to be completely honest. It's very possible that that happens. Taking a look at this state's uh, traje trajectory, it has ample opportunity to be a swing state in future elections, only decided by 10 points in this election in possibly 10 years. We could see competitive Alaska, where candidates actually go out and fly out to visit the state more than once in a primary season or once in a general election season. It should be very interesting if the state continues to get leftward uh, as the elections progress. Uh, moving on, we have other states on the uh, western side of the United States. Arizona, of course. Joe Biden flipped this state. It wasn't even won by Obama. It was certainly not won by Kerry or Gore. Last time, last president to win it on the Democratic side was President Clinton in 1996. So uh, this was a 24-year time period between it had voted uh, for the Democratic Party nearly a fourth of a century, and it flipped in 2020, uh, ultimately swinging to the Democrats by 9.4% relative to 2012. So that's actually a likely swing. Utah, 
swings by 30 points, 27.6 to be exact, but practically 30 points in favor of the Democratic Party from 2012. Very interesting, but that's also because uh, Mitt Romney, he's Mormon, he's Republican, absolutely obliterated uh, Obama in the state of Utah, but uh, a lot of that vote was made up because Joe Biden was able to win over those traditionally conservative, those uh, traditional values type of Mormon conservative voters that ultimately voted for Joe Biden, being the first Democrat they had voted for likely in years, likely in decades. And, you know, Joe Biden's performance in Utah has certainly been uh, underappreciated by the Democratic Party because he went from a state that voted for Obama with just 25 uh, percent of the vote all the way up to 38 percent, 39 percent for Biden's performance in 2020. A very fascinating performance in neighboring Utah, uh, not Utah, Colorado. Uh, Joe Biden did eight points better than Barack Obama did in 2012. I find that fairly interesting. He does a 0.64 percent better in New Mexico. I also find that very interesting considering that the state I really thought was very solid uh, for uh, Barack Obama. In fact, you know, they called it immediately for Barack Obama on election night, but also we had a lot less data in 2020. So I understand why New Mexico was called a lot later. But it's very interesting. And going across this same type of region, Texas actually shifts to the Democrats by 10.2%. That's super big. That is a super large shift relative to 2012. And it's due to the fact that Biden has won over and also more voters have entered into the state. Biden has been able to win over more of those traditional type of Republican voters that were fine with Romney, fine with McCain, may not necessarily been Republican voters, more conservative independents that just really couldn't stick it uh, with Donald Trump, especially a second time. But for Trump by nine points the first time, that would have been a swing relative to 2012. And also uh, in 2020, well, went to Trump by 5.6%. So it's a very significant swing, 10 points in favor of the Democrats. Kansas surprisingly shifts by seven points. It was actually a likely state in this election. Um, I wasn't surprised it was likely. I was just surprised that other states weren't likely with it. Uh, Nebraska at large shifts to the Democrats by 2.6%. I think that's fairly interesting. Nebraska's first goes to the Democrats uh, by 1.7%, doesn't vote for them, uh, shifts that way. And Nebraska's second shifts by 13.8%. Romney won the second district by seven points. Biden did the same thing. So this shift makes sense, but it's just fairly interesting because Obama was one of the first Democrats to win Nebraska's second district, I believe, uh, in modern history, maybe uh, even in history, despite, uh, you know, without winning the entirety of the state. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, but Nebraska's second district has shifted a lot, a lot. Uh, but it is a congressional district, so it's definitely going to be drawn differently next time. Uh, we already covered Alaska. Illinois shifts to Joe Biden by 0.12%. I find that interesting, uh, considering that it actually shifted to the right compared to 2016. Hillary Clinton did better than Obama did in 2012. Uh, Biden did better than Obama did in 2012, despite uh, Obama being from the state of Illinois. It's a very interesting thing to point out, but uh, I guess Biden's appeal definitely goes across the Midwest and even reaching down into the state of Illinois. Uh, Georgia, Shifts to the Democrats by 8.1%. I don't think anyone's shocked seeing that one, uh, considering it flipped relative to 2012. Uh, but look at the amount of electoral votes so far. I mean, we're already at 201. This is a very large amount. A lot of states shifting by a likely amount. That means anywhere between 5 and 15%. In most cases, we're seeing that happen on the uh, middle end of this 5 to 15%, 8 to 13%. Uh, but very large shifts in a lot of these states in favor of Joe Biden. And I find it very interesting considering Obama was definitely uh, a good champion for the Democratic Party, someone who was able to obliterate McCain in 2008, and then also in 2012, hold up for someone who was an unpopular president at the time, did not have a high approval rating compared to how he left office. I think it was maybe uh, 12, 13 points lower than when he left office. But uh, looking at uh, the 2012 election results, I'm honestly surprised to see some states with a very large minority population ultimately shift to Joe Biden relative to 2012, because Obama certainly tapped into a base that hadn't voted before in very large numbers. The reason why we saw him win in a number of these states in 2008 was because he was able to win over white voters and sway a lot of voters who traditionally didn't vote, younger voters and minority voters who vote at a less, uh, lower rate than white voters, and completely changed the entire election results in favor of the Democrats to a point where they had a trifecta that was beyond overcoming for the Republican Party, or so we thought, until 2010 and 2014. But let's go ahead and continue going past Georgia. North Carolina shifts to the Democrats by 0.7%. I think that's pretty interesting as well. Obama lost the state in 2012. Biden did as well, but by a narrower margin. Virginia shifts to the Democrats by 6.2%. In fact, Joe Biden's the first Democrat to win Virginia by double digits since 1944. So that has definitely been a long time coming. Virginia, 
uh, shifts to the Democrats by six percentage points. Maryland, my home state, shifts to Joe Biden by 7.1 percent. He was really liked here. I can tell you that much. Uh, he was able to win over counties that hadn't voted for Democrats in uh, quite some time or shifted counties that were always Republican, then voted for Clinton and then voted for Biden by a very large amount. Uh, but Maryland shifted by 7.1 percent in favor of the Democrats. Compacted between Maryland and Virginia is the District of Columbia, which shifted to Joe Biden by 3.6 percent. Uh, the state is getting more and more or 3.1 percent. Sorry, it doesn't change the characterization, but the state itself is getting more and more and more and more. Uh, not the state, soon to be state, probably, uh, you know, District of Columbia is getting more and more pro-democratic as the years go on. And, you know, that just makes sense. Uh, we are seeing uh, a number of voters, regardless of any type of demographic, nothing holds up. No stereotype holds up in D.C. Outside of Georgetown University, you're probably not going to find anything that really matches a uh, stereotype in the district itself. Just because what we see, it's a very diverse district, number one. Um, all type of uh, economic classes, all type of education gaps, whatever it might be. Ultimately, this the district itself is just fundamentally pro-Democrat. It's the most liberal part of the United States. Wyoming doesn't even come close to how partisan D.C. is. And once you actually visit there, what you're going to see is that any type of Republican you see is a transplant and they don't live there. And, you know, I find that a very that to be a very interesting factor uh, in the District of Columbia that it will never vote for a Republican. No matter what happens, no matter who's running, you could put a pebble against a Republican and that pebble would win because the district itself is so partisan. Uh, and, you know, it's nowhere near in comparison to Wyoming. The comparison cannot be made, uh, which is exactly why we are seeing, you know, some political experts saying D.C. would be uh, not even political experts. Anyone that's watching the election, really any one of you viewers would immediately know D.C. is a very solid uh, Democratic region. But this is in discussion. I'm talking about it a lot because we are going to see it come back up after we start to see uh, more and more vaccinations released and uh, COVID plans. As the Democrats realize that their trifecta might end in 2022, they may try to rush D.C. statehood through. So that's why I'm spending too much time talking about it. Let's move on. Neighboring Delaware actually shifts to Joe Biden by 0.34 percent, kind of expected because it's his home state. Doesn't really make sense that it wouldn't be, but also I mean, he was on the ballot in 2012. So you could have argued, you know, maybe Biden did better then. Uh, but it shifts to the Democratic Party. Connecticut goes to the Democrats, a 2.7% shift relative to 2012 in Massachusetts. 10.4% more Democratic. I think that's very interesting. Uh, Massachusetts was labeled as one of the most Democratic states in the entire country in 2012, 2016. And now in 2020, it almost holds true. I think Vermont just outpaced it uh, for largest swing and also uh, largest margin of victory for Joe Biden. I think that's largely due to the fact that Bernie Sanders was not a write-in candidate. He wasn't in 2016, but a lot of people wrote him in. 5.6%, uh, I believe, wrote him in in uh, the 2016 presidential election. But looking at uh, Massachusetts, I mean, it shifts to the Democratic Party by a very large amount. New Hampshire shifts to the Democrats by 1.8%. He does better than Obama there. And I think that actually uh, Maine at large Maine at large, or Maine's first district, puts us at 269. I didn't even realize that the number was going to reach this. 269, Maine's first district, goes to Joe Biden 1.7% more than it voted for Barack Obama. Just to make sure that I'm not missing a singular state. Um, oh, I think I am. I'm missing the state of Oklahoma. I guess I skipped over it. Shifts to Joe Biden by 0.46%. So I was wondering how we were going to get to 270. I thought it was possible, but as it got closer, I realized it might not be. But Oklahoma actually shifts to Joe Biden by 0.46% relative to 2012. So ultimately, 276 electoral votes. Um, what you're going to notice is that all of the states in gray, that 262 toss-up, were better for Barack Obama than they were for Joe Biden. So 2012 Obama, 2020 Biden, they had differences, but it was roughly even. Almost split half down the electorate uh, at 276, almost about to be exact uh, if Oklahoma had not just uh, entered in that way. But it was my oversight that missed it, so don't put the blame on Oklahoma. Uh, but looking at the... Uh, electoral map it was almost an exact split but roughly half of the electorate was better for obama or roughly half the states half the electoral votes were better for obama than they were for biden uh, and then the opposite is true for the other half so looking at this map we end up with 276 electoral votes in the biden outperformance map obviously this is not a feasible election prediction this is not an election prediction it's just comparing the 2012 margin compared to the 2020 presidential results where joe biden was able to win uh, what he was able to do 
was flip Georgia and Arizona. Definitely the shining stars of this map, considering they have likely characterizations. Texas, Colorado, Virginia as well. Those made sense. They got more and more blue as this, the uh, elections went on. Uh, California makes sense. Kansas makes sense. All of these states make sense because we saw the trends there. You know, even looking at Nebraska's second district, that one might have been surprising about the margin, but it makes sense that it's in the likely shift, uh, regardless if that's 5% or 15%. And it ended up being 13, nearly 14%, but still, uh, you know, Overall, this map does really make sense based off where Biden was able to appeal, the voters he was able to cross over, traditional GOP voters, family values type voters. Uh, when I say traditional GOP, it does not mean that they are Republicans, just conservative leaning independents that didn't like President Trump and ultimately flipped a number of these states uh, and shifted them all the way to the left compared to 2012. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my post-2020 election videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.